Hello and welcome. I'm Vincent McCory and this is Africa 54. Now, terrorism in Nigeria again tops our news today. In a minute, we'll see why a victim of Boko Haram is testifying on Capitol Hill. But first, the latest violence on the ground. Nigerian officials say at least 818 people were killed in two in bombings in the central city of Jos. A Nigerian television station captured the moment that the second bomb went off on Tuesday. The explosions at a busy marketplace flattened several buildings and caused fires that, uh, that were still burning hours later. Officials expect to find more victims. Nigerian President Gulag Jonathan called the bombings cruel and evil and said he is fully committed to winning the war on terrorism. No one has claimed responsibility, but suspicion immediately fell on Boko Haram, the Islamist extremist group blamed for thousands of deaths. Now the group is trying to establish a conservative Muslim state in the north. It is also behind last month's kidnapping of uh, nearly 300 schoolgirls from a remote village in Bono State. Well, for more, we check in with Cynthia Ari of Nigeria's Channels TV, who joins us now by phone from Lagos. Cynthia, welcome. Thank you, Vincent. Good to be here. Now, now there are reports uh, coming in that actually there has been another attack in the northeast of Nigeria. Can you give us some details? Yes, um, unfortunately, there was another attack just the day after the Joss blast. It actually left 75 people dead. And in this case, it was two villages in northeast Nigeria that were attacked. Um, the villages are Shawa and Alagano. With, um, nine were killed in Shawa, some were ki 17 were killed in Alagano. Some a lot of people fled to the bush, nearby bushes, when they saw the sect coming because they came out about midnight, early midnight today. And um, so were, that was the account we got from survivors. Now, the, what is really troubling in this case is that it's really, it was really close to Chibok, where those over 200 girls were abducted. And that actually was, talking about... That really makes this case. Yes. And I, didn't, I didn't hear that, Vincent. Yes. Uh, are we, do we have any new information regarding the girls? As regards the girls, I think what's happening now is they're keeping information on the low. Especially concerning, uh, or after the summit which held in Paris over the weekend, if we paid attention to what the organizer, that um, Prince, President Francois Hollande of France, was saying, he was asked by you know media, okay, have you found the girls, or how close are you? Do you know where they could be at this moment? He gave, he said specifically that even if he did, that he wasn't going to hit that based on the fact that he knew they were being monitored. So I, what's happening now concerning the girls is actually being kept, uh, we would say, played down. So as to, to keep, um, you know, the, the government mm -hmm. and also the international community who's giving help a step ahead of the situation. Yes. They can't declare all the information that they have concerning uh, um, locating those girls, but a lot is being done. That yes. I can say for sure. Yes, now, Cynthia, you know, the government of Nigeria has said that it has beefed up security and launched this massive operation to defeat Boko Haram. How does it explain this recent uh, wave of attacks by Boko Haram, or at least suspected Boko Haram militias, militants? Well, based on the attack which occurred in Jos yesterday, I would say that, you know, it, um, Joss is not was not necessarily deemed a hotspot in, in that state of state of emergency wasn't declared there. The state of emergency was, was declared in Adama, Bono, and Yobe State. So we could say the government's attention was fixed on those, on those states, and maybe it was thought about the expense of other states. So that made it a bit easy for, for the explosions to take place in, in Joss and kill almost... Um, initially, the figure was 118, but from what we understand from the Plateau State Police Commissioner 75, and it was twin bombs that went off. So I would say that the government is doing a lot in focusing on the hotspots and tackling the insurgency on those hotspots, but it seems to be at the expense of, um, of the rest of the, uh, the northeast um, of the country. But what is really what really raises eyebrows is today's incident where people were killed, and it was just close to Chibok. So that in a way contradicts, sort of contradicts what I just said. Now people are living in fear and confusion, like, okay, what's going on here? How can people be killed a month later, the place where 
300 girls are abducted. So right now, there's a lot of fear in, uh, in mm -hmm. northeast Nigeria because people are uncertain. Indeed, a lot of concern. And we will be watching the situation there. Cynthia, thank you very much. Uh, Cynthia Ari of Nigeria's Channels TV reporting live from Lagos.